Was there any feeling, though, uh, with the people in the room that making a decision definitive like this in these 24 hours might have been a little rash just because, like, hey, why don't we wait? Let's see how this progresses and then figure it out. Or was it they had to make a decision the right The feeling away? that I got was once we saw all the major conferences and all the mid-major conferences that had yet to decide a bid cancel their conference tournament, the NCAA had to come out and say something. I don't know if it was going to happen by end of business on Thursday, but I thought by Friday we would have a firm decision whether or not the NCAA tournament was going to be played. And I think once we saw that avalanche of news with all these conference tournaments being canceled, we needed a decision either way if the tournament was going to go on. So why why not the possibility to delay for two weeks or to say, hey, we'll play the tournament you know, uh, late April or early May? Is that just logistically impossible given schools and students? You know, Peter, PFT, one thing we got to remember, the NCAA tournament is planned out years in advance. And one thing that started to happen last night was the NCAA, from talking to numerous people close to the situation, was looking at switching venues for both the Elite Eight and the Final Four because they weren't going to have crowds. So that's what they were working on yesterday. So when you think about all the logistical things that had to take place, another thing that had to take place was you guys know how the rules work. The automatic qualifier from each conference is the winner of the conference tournament. Right. The NCAA would have had to make an addendum to that rule if conference tournaments weren't played. They would have had to alter pre-existing rules. So there were so many different variables, but the most important thing was the health of everybody involved and not spreading this virus right now, which is really taking over our country. Is there any backsies? Can we do any backsies on this? Could they wake up in two weeks and be like, hey, I, I, we I, thought I about it. I don't Let's think so. Let's just do the tournament. Big I'm, I'm already in, still bargaining right now. I'm already in my head preparing for the 2020-21 season. I love that. It, <laughs> no, okay. It, it's okay. only been like two hours, yes. and you're already thinking ahead. Oh, All right, yeah. so what are they going to do with eligibility? Again, a wise man once told me a long time ago never to speculate on speculation. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to speculate on speculation. I could see, obviously, certain circumstances where there are exceptions made and so on and so forth. But in my head right now, to the 1920 season, happy trails to you until we meet again. Oh, and now my we're, God. And, and, How have you turned the pages quickly? I'm you, sitting here so being healthy. like, they're going to wake up. In, yeah, in two no. days and be like, turn the machines back because on, Because you can't control what happens to you in life. You can control how you respond. Wow, And, and then you wow. have to learn mm -hmm. at some point to compartmentalize and say, you know what, it makes zero sense whatsoever to be worried or be concerned with things that you can't control. Yep. We can't control this, so we look forward to 2021. That's what Pep Hamilton taught me. There are two things you can control, your attitude and your effort that you mm -hmm. put into what's whatever the, you're doing. What's the opening game for 2021? I haven't gotten there Is yet. There, oh, ugh, called your bluff there. So, yeah. actually, this, this brings up a very interesting situation. I would assume the here. Champions Classic, okay, that Tuesday right. night. Yeah. This is a million percent going to be speculating on speculation, but we do have to crown an NCAA champion, yep. don't we? So, does that go to Kansas? Does Wisconsin. that, I does that go to Wisconsin? I, you can, I think we're you going can to make see the an argument that Wisconsin I, I think we're going to see an, is a national champion. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see an asterisk there. For 2020, there will be an asterisk. Season canceled. Is, okay, but still still UVA? So, is it still UVA? Because yeah. to be the man, you got to beat the man? Leah, let's just pretend that it's happening. Let's talk some. Like, let's talk who you like. Go well, into the well, Let's just <laughs> suspend okay. disbelief. Yeah. Okay. Hey, who are the one hey, seeds? Hey, uh, yeah, so Dayton, one seed coming out of the East. What do you think? Look, Dayton to me was, just side. <laughs> Day, like, Dayton to me was going to be the one seed in the East. Dayton to me, you know, was having the type of season that Wichita State had in 13-14 before they got picked off by Kentucky in the round of 32, but you know, these right now are all stories that are never going to be no, finished. No, 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 we're doing it right now. That's not what we're doing right now. That's I get it. I'm talking right in now. real terms. That's not what we're who's, doing. Who's the one like Blue Blood program that has underperformed this year but still has the horses where you could see them making a deep run in the tournament? That has underperformed this year. Yeah. You know, I thought if Duke got the right matchup and well, Duke no, no, got, no, no, they actually they took themselves they out. took themselves out before That's, the tournament. Duke was, all was right. eliminated. So, no, I'm so aware of that. Coach but what I'm K saying is, said, "Oh, my back. I'm not playing." What I'm saying though is, it, I thought all season long that if Duke could have somehow found its way into the East region and played games across the street at the Garden, which is Cameron Indoor Stadium North, that we would have seen Duke you know, in the potentially the Final Four. Because if a Dayton or a San Diego State got the one seed in the East, then Duke, I thought, would have been waiting on the other side of the bracket to play a yeah. pseudo-home game to go to the Final Four. How, how do you beat Kansas? What's the recipe for beating Kansas in this tournament? Well, Kansas has yet to lose a game, obviously, this year at full strength. Right. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, we have seen, obviously, this year from Kansas is that they're an elite defensive team. I think you need, obviously, people 
that can drag Udoka Azabuki away from the rim because mm-hmm. he was so obviously key to their defense in addition to their offense. So you would need, obviously, a capable big man on offense to drag Udoka Azabuki away from the rim, but also somebody strong enough on defense to deal with him in the mm-hmm. paint. But unfortunately, those are questions that we're No, no, no. We're doing happening. this for a few minutes. It's, Let okay. us have a few minutes yeah. here. Few minutes, a few minutes. A few minutes. I have a uh, future on Wisconsin 100 to 1. Okay. 100 to 1. I got it in uh, early How was February. your confidence level with Wisconsin? I, I had bought all the way in. That team was playing After the tough. Indiana win? Yeah, after the Indiana win, the way they finished the season, this was going to be their year. Do you think that you see them with the draw they got? They're the four seed in the Midwest region. Do what you think. <laughs> what draw? Do, do you think that they will have a chance to maybe get to Atlanta in the final four? It depends. Are they seeded with against Vermont in the first round? Because Vermont oh, would have been really cool. scary very with cool. Anthony oh, Lamb. Yeah, yeah. Ryan cool. Davis was the guy at Vermont that you know my well embedded moles in the America East were telling me was going to be the next star of that program. Really good combo forward, can pick and pop, can you know make shots from deep. So I was prepared to go deep on Ryan Davis. So that's one of your potential 13-4 upsets. Yeah, give me alerts. a 12-5 because we all know every year. I think it's a 12-5 five. darling would have probably been Will be. ETSU if oh. we you know, it, I thought that would have been the team yep. that people would have jumped on but unfortunately guys. No. Nope. Uh, player uh, uh, player keep of the tournament who you got? Minute. Obi Toppin? Ain't no stopping. I was I was prepared to. You uh, are prepared uh, to? Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> We need to prepared. work on your tenses here, John. I, I I was going all in on Luca Garza as National Player of the Year and I'll tell you why. Ooh. When you look at right now the Atlantic 10, there was one team that was a lock for the NCAA tournament. Dayton. When you look at the Big Ten, you had a guy in Luca Garza that was putting up historic numbers that the Big Ten hadn't seen in 50 years. And think about who he was doing it against. Maryland has Jalen Smith. Illinois has Kofi Coburn. Obviously, Ohio State has Caleb Wesson. There are capable big men in the Big Ten. Michigan Micah State, Potter. Micah Potter. Michigan State has Xavier Tillman. Michigan is John Teske. You have all these players that are capable of their position. You have and Minnesota. You have, Minnesota. Daniel Oturo. I mean, and you unbelievable. Have, and you have and Isa, uh, Matt Harms as well. Mm-hmm. You uh, you have all these guys who are capable of their position. You have and you have Luca Garza putting up insane numbers. Mm, what about uh, what about Cassius? Are we going to get an, another oh, year out yeah. of him at Michigan State? Mm. I feel like we should give him another year of eligibility to come back. Whether that be like seven. You know, one thing too, which I've learned, which is unfortunate, but what you're really going to see here, one of the things that has really come to the forefront the last couple of years in college basketball is that the majority of these elite prospects just want to start their professional clocks you know, early because they're so obviously consumed with the NBA. So you, I think, will see, again, a situation where people will now bypass, obviously, their eligibility, even if they're not ready to be in the NBA, mm-hmm. to try and start their professional career.